Hi there, welcome to another edition of Cutler Corner. I'm State Representative Josh Cutler, proud to represent the towns of Duxbury, Pembroke, and Hanson. And this month we have a terrific guest, pleased to welcome Duxbury Chile Police Chief Matt Clancy. Welcome, Chief. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So uh, I know there's a lot of things we want to talk about, and I'm sure we won't get to everything. But I wanted to, before we dive into some of the issues on the front, I wonder if you could just kind of tell us briefly your background and how you got up to uh, be here in Duxbury, what were you doing before, and what your career path has, has taken you on. Oh, sure. Um, well, I, uh, I'm a, uh, a native of the South Shore, grew up in, grew up in Rockland, my, and uh, uh, started in police work as a, a part-time officer in, in Rockland. And, uh, that led me to a full-time job on Cape Cod, where I spent 17, uh, 17 years with the Mashpee Police Department. Uh, in 2002, I left Mashpee to take the uh, police chief's job in neighboring Plumpton, where I was the uh, police chief over in Plumpton for just about eight years. And uh, the opportunity arose in Duxbury, a town that I was uh, very fond of as a kid, spending lots of hours fishing from the bridge and spending time at the beach like every other kid from the South sure. Shore. And I uh, was uh, very fortunate to, uh, to be offered the position. So here, here we are, it's uh, coming up on the fifth anniversary. Fifth, I was just gonna say five, yeah. wow, okay, it goes quite quick. The other thing that goes by quick uh, is um, we have a new uh, police station in Duxbury. For those who are familiar with the old police station, it, was, it seemed like it was <laughs> never the building that was never gonna get replaced, but it, it finally did. Uh, good things come to those who wait, and now you have a nice brand new police station. How, I guess it's not totally brand new, it's been, been there a couple of years. How's it going? What's it like? What are some of the features that maybe people aren't aware of? Sure, it's, it's, uh, it's been fantastic. You know, we, uh, we appreciate the, the support of the town every day we walk into this building. Um, you know, some of the things that we, we, we have the space now to accommodate for is uh, evidence processing lab. You know, uh, we do latent fingerprint work inside the building. It doesn't get, uh, we don't have to, to go out to other sources. We have a, a small uh, computer crimes lab with the, the requisite equipment. So we're able to do a lot of the uh, investigative analysis of computer hard drives or anything digital uh, you know, under our own roof. So it allows us to uh, sort of uh, make Duxbury's issues top priority, where maybe previously uh, you know, all of our needs would go to maybe a regional uh, facility mm -hmm. and you know, they have to prioritize. You can handle some things in-house, is that? So we're doing a lot of that work in house, yeah, and it's uh, you know, and we're you know, we're getting some positive results. We're cleaning up uh, the the issues that arise for our residents. Uh, we're able to aggressively work on those and, and clean those up. And I presume not that that's our primary uh, goal, but the, it's uh, the, the the jail cells are a little bit more uh, accommodating <laughs> than than the ones in the old building. Is that fair to say? Uh, the holding the, cells, I guess. The, what do you call them? Yes, the uh, you know, the uh, the hotel uh, Duxbury uh, <laughs> is a cute little reference. But uh, actually, uh, interestingly enough, the new station has uh, fewer holding cells than we had on uh, on uh, uh, West Street, but. Uh, uh, but they're far more efficient, secure, uh, easy, easier to manage. So uh, it's uh, it's all good. <laughs> good, good. Well, we're glad uh, glad to finally get that new building. That was quite a <laughs> long process. So um, one of the things, you know, more serious topic um, seems like is an issue everywhere: the issue of drugs and opiates. And I know in Duxbury, we, you know, we're certainly not immune from from some of the, some of those same issues. I'm curious to get your perspective, someone who's on the, the front line, so to speak, and how you see the opiate issue here in Duxbury and also regionally. Well, um, you know, we're clearly not, not immune uh, in our community. Um, and unfortunately, I guess uh, fortunate for Duxbury is that we haven't uh, experienced uh, the uh, almost the epidemic level of uh, abuse and overdose um, you know, we have our instances, and, um, but uh, I look at some of our communities here in the South Shore uh, uh, that, are, uh, that are really struggling um, with multiple events a week, mm. and um, it's extremely troubling. And um, this was, a, uh, this was a, uh, an epidemic that I'd seen before. Um, you mentioned off camera your, your experience down in the Cape. Yeah, for and this this dates back uh, to, the, to the late '80s, early early '90s, and uh, you know there were areas of the Cape that were truly uh, it was heroin was truly an epidemic. You know, when a bag of heroin was uh, available on the street for three dollars a bag, mm -hmm. um, it um, it just overtook 
some of the other baseline drugs or entry-level drugs as drug of choice, and um, the, the overdose uh, rates were, were, were pretty troubling. Mm -hmm. um, and we hadn't seen that uh, since that time, and particularly in here, you know, here in the, uh, the South Shore, but over the last four or five years, um, now we are. And, uh, you know, we struggle to find, uh, you know, everybody in, involved in this process, all the stakeholders, struggling to find ways to get this under control. And what sort of things, when you say, you know, if Duxbury you know, is facing, what sort of things are you seeing? Are you seeing, um, you know, more property crimes? Are you seeing more, uh, you know, um, distribution type cases, um, possession? What, what kind of things are you seeing on the ground? Well, you know, with the, with the opiate issue, it's, uh, it's mainly, we, we point to the uh, burglaries mm -hmm. uh, and the typically daytime burglaries. And these are, um, you know, the, the atypical uh, individual that's entering these houses in the middle of the day is typically that uh, 18 to 25 year old kid that is sick. That, you know, it is all driven by the addiction. Um, are they going in to steal drugs or to steal money to buy drugs? They're, they're stealing items. There's cash available. Okay. It's a, you know, these, this is, these aren't sophisticated burglaries. These mm -hmm. are folks that are uh, in, in need of a high, and they're going to go in very quickly and grab anything that they can get their hands on readily. And then, you know, off to the pawn shops or, uh, you know, and then to pick up their, to pick up their drugs. So that, that, that's how you see it manifesting the drug issue primarily in Duxbury? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it, hand in hand. The, uh, the, the issues with the, with the uh, burglaries go hand in hand with the... Uh, do, you, do you have many arrests for, for distribution or possession uh, in, in Duxbury, or do you see that it is more incurring in other towns than people kind of bring well, in into it, town? You know, we've, uh, we're conducting, we, at any given time, we probably yeah. have two or three uh, investigations that are based in our, in our community. Um, distribution, um, not that not that mm -hmm. uh, not that common that a case is is made on a dis from a distribution level, but um, you know just from a, a the possession level, and it always mm -hmm. snowballs back into um, uh, into the property crimes, the, the yeah. thefts, um, the and the, the burglaries. There's always uh, there's always uh, investigations um, that tackle it from that perspective, and it's. Uh, these are re regional. Uh, you know, we utilize the regional teams. You know, my people. I think in the last couple of years, I think it, you might have seen uh, bits in the news where you know my officers were arresting uh, someone in the act of a burglary in Dover, uh, in, Sher in in Quincy, in Dedham, uh, because these investigations take us. So there's no boundaries here. Right. They become. They really become uh, difficult for local police, and that's why these uh, we tackle them. From, you know, with these sure. regional investigative you never know not to, to joke about it but we, I never would have guessed that there'd be a, a rapper would be shot in Duxbury whether we'd have a, a, a corpse found uh, uh, it was an interesting <laughs> year for us very uh, highly unusual year for us Some unusual cases <laughs> um, but back, back to the drug thing do you find that it's uh, prescription drugs or the heroin oxy, oxy, the heroin kind of drug that is a bigger issue in, in Duxbury well it's going to be the, the, prescri the access to the prescription mm -hmm. medications and the, uh, you know, the oxycodone, uh, and, but that's where it starts, yep. and that's where, uh, well, you know, frankly, it, it starts at the int int introductory level with, you know, with marijuana, and then it makes. That's going to be my next question. It, it makes its, you know, it, it uh, you know, clearly makes its way. It progresses, um, and um, you know, the prescription medication once that becomes either not available or difficult for them to uh, readily get their hands on uh, well then it's the next step is to a much cheaper alternative which is which is the heroin unfortunately now you guys uh, Duxbury uh, is, is uh, has a new drug disposal uh, pr program that people can come down to the station and get rid of old prescription drugs is that correct we do 24 hours a day okay. anyone can come in and we'll you know we're really encouraging folks to those expired meds, mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe if a loved one passes, um, maybe it's not a bad idea to, to go collect yep. their meds. Um, you know, it's completely anonymous. You don't have to so even no knock on the window. Asked. You don't even have to talk to the officer. You can just go into this disposal unit, and, and that's with pills. And you'll see there's instructions as to what to do if you have liquids or mm -hmm. if you have sharps. Uh, we send you other places, 
but it's the same scenario. It's anonymous, and we strongly encourage, we just want to get those, those drugs out of the system. And uh, obviously, we, you know, we don't want those drugs to, to be misused or fall mm -hmm. into the wrong hands. And from an environmental perspective, it, just flushing them down so the drain say, is not, a, not good a good idea. idea right? Not a good idea. It gets so, in our water system. Yeah, exactly. So it causes other issues. So mm -hmm. that's available. 20, so people can just come down to the police station on West Street. Extremely. Um, I said West Street. I, I you, caught, you should have caught me. <laughs> Mayflower Street. <laughs> it, uh, extremely successful program. Um, you know, we started that in partnership with the uh, DA, the uh, uh, sheriff, uh, yep. McDonald, and our uh, Board of Health and Health agents, and incredibly successful. So uh, we're really happy about Great. that. Well, we're gonna, we can take a break in a minute. I want to come back. I'd love to talk about the whole issue of marijuana. That's definitely, you know, uh, on the horizon. Um, but also want to get your take on the legislative front and also, you know, on the national level, we've had a lot of discussion about, uh, you know, incidents that happened in New York and, and in uh, Ferguson and what your take, uh, you know, from your point of view and your advantages being a uh, police officer and things that uh, your organization is working on. So that's, a, that's what we call a, a tease in the business. So we will <laughs> take a, a quick break and uh, we'll come back and, and chat about those things. I'm uh, Representative Josh Cutler, and you're watching Cutler Corner. We'll be right back. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. And welcome back. I'm Representative Josh Cutler. You're watching Cutler Corner. And my guest this month again is uh, Duxbury Police Chief Matt Clancy. Uh, Chief, again, thank you for, for joining us. We were talking before the break about uh, opiates and drug abuse. And I, you mentioned. Um, one of the issues, uh, you know, sort of a gateway drug, marijuana. And mm -hmm. I was curious to get your take on the whole marijuana issue. Obviously, there's been a lot of changing landscape. We have the new medical marijuana law that's coming on I I into play now. We don't have a, a dispensary here in Duxbury, but we do have some in the area. And um, there's obviously discussion about what the next step is. And, and I'm curious just to, A, get your take on the medical marijuana issue, if you've seen any uh, ramifications of that in Duxbury already, and what you see moving forward, any concerns you might have about, um, you know, marijuana being legalized. Well, I think um, from a just a general standpoint on um, the le of the mar medical marijuana piece, it's um, uh, you know I am by no means uh, have a background in medicine whatsoever, uh, but from a, a layman's perspective, I uh, I really need to see hear more convincing evidence that there are not alternative uh, medications available um, uh, as opposed to, to the, uh, as opposed to marijuana but uh, that said uh, we have uh, those that far more uh, educated and knowledgeable on the subject have have, uh, uh, have made their thoughts known and, and the voters have spoken and it's now it's a reality in Massachusetts um, some of my concerns moving forward with uh, medical marijuana are, you know we still have um, in Massachusetts, we're really still working on the the process and the um, identification cards and and the whole sure. prescription process. And the, uh, sometimes, you know, we we seem to you know, put the cart before the horse with its uh, this big drive to legalize it, but not a whole lot of thought into the implementation, sure. or the or that comes maybe a little too late. And I see that there's there still it seems to be a, a substantial level of Uncertainty and confusion out there, and I and I know it's being worked on at, a, at the state level, and and we'll you know I'm I'm sure we'll get there. Uh, do you, do you I have? I mean, I guess it's an interesting point. Is now if you know if you were to, if one of your officers was to pull someone over and find a you know a portion of marijuana, and 
the person says it's a prescription. I mean, what is the process there? It's, it, and that's where it's it, it's it's still uh, okay. being developed, and that's the, there that lies some of the problem. Um, but um, so we're you know we're, we're hopeful that uh, we'll get we'll get a, a handle on that, and it'll be crystal clear mm -hmm. uh, to everyone involved as to what the requ what those requirements are. Um, you know, then you look at my other concern is that, uh, and like, you know, our neighbors in Marshfield recently at their last town meeting, uh, so they modified their uh, bylaw, which had to do with the consumption of smoking marijuana, the consumption of THC products in, in public. You know, much like you have an open container uh, mm -hmm. law for open container of alcohol, uh, they have the uh, marijuana bylaw. We have it as well in Dutchburg. That, uh, that the marijuana THC uh, open consumption, public consumption by mm -hmm. law. They went the next step and, and they're prohibiting um, qualified persons, persons with a prescription from uh, essentially medicating themselves in a public mm -hmm. place. Um, you know, um, is there any flavor for that in, in my community moving forward? Well, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But <clears throat> for, from my perspective, both as a police chief, but also as a parent, um, you know, I, I, I see the scenario of maybe someone, you know, lighting up while at the beach and mm. my so kids So theoretically, that's, that would be legal that would be today. Legal. That, that, would, that, would, that would be legal. And, you know, they could be very, uh, you know, legal and they're taking their medication. You mm -hmm. know, they're, they're properly prescribed medication and, uh, you know, we get that. But um, I, I just question time and place sure. and, and location. And that raises all kinds of, so obviously, you know, when you pull the, back to the scenario, if you pulled someone over, it, 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 it still would be illegal to be driving under the influence, whether it's you know, alcohol or marijuana. Correct. So you would, I guess, presume your officers would have to, uh, you know, apply the law and evidentiary standards the same way there might is, with alcohol. There has been, it's, uh, to my knowledge, and, and, and you, you <laughs> may Maybe know, something I'll have to work yeah, on. <laughs> exactly. We, we, uh, uh, those, as, we, as I talked about the implementation, how things, you know, uh, you know, weren't really, it wasn't a whole lot of how this is really going to be right. administered. Right. Uh, once we initially passed it, it, there's another perfect component. Oh, well, how does it tie in? Do we have to modify um, any of the any of the uh, impaired operating statutes? Well, I don't think I don't think we do. But uh, there's a whole lot of mm -hmm. it brings brings a whole lot of questions. To and it, I'm just thinking of as they come up. But now that you know the the the, uh, the law that we pa that we passed a few years before this was decriminalizing marijuana possession for small amounts. And so the issue that that, that came up with that is that someone might have a small amount. You know, just getting them to sh produce identification, it's a civil penalty. So that, how does that play, interplay with, you know, can you, if, if someone is not driving a car, can you force them to produce identification to show that they have a prescription if they have a small amount? Is that, these are all questions <laughs> that were in the back of me. These are, <laughs> exactly. These are all those little details that, um, and I know, you know, that uh, the good folks at the legislature are, are uh, knocking with you know I think it was all uh, with uh, you know all the right intentions, and then when it comes to the uh, you know the boots on the ground that have to you know work with these these statutes, uh, and a number of these uh, they said with the, with the marijuana laws, um, you, you folks have heard you know from your police chiefs and police mm. associations where we said hey this this isn't working that isn't working and we missed this we missed that, and you know th these things are being worked on but. Uh, uh, at times, to the frustration of uh, the guy and gal on the street sure. in the uniform that are that are charged with with dealing with these with these issues, so that's a good. Uh, so we're you're talking about some of the legislative issues that um, that you guys face, and uh, I know we we were at a, a meeting recently with uh, police chiefs all over southeastern Mass and talking about some of the legislative priorities for the upcoming session. One issue that um, struck a chord with me was the uh, police pursuit statute, which um, uh, you apparently worked on as, as a younger police officer. I was shocked to learn that, f you know, failure to stop for a, a, a police cruiser is a hundred dollar fine Correct. currently. Um, that seems like that would be an encouragement for someone who has a you know a warrant to to skip out and to to not. Uh, I hate to give the plant a seed, but that seems like a dangerous thing and to have on the books. And it's exactly how we see it. Is it's it's truly uh, since the consequences is nil right. uh, for the most part. It's truly more of an incentive to. Uh, to run and um, uh, baby steps many many years ago uh, 
the legislature took the action to at least make that an arrestable offense. Mm. Um, if you go back to the, when I first started as a police officer, I recall uh, getting involved in uh, one of these episodes. It was a burglary case, and they, uh, the chase concludes safely. And um, the young officer, my sergeant, tell me, you know, you don't have a right of arrest. Just give them their hundred dollar ticket and give them a ride home. Uh, I thought that was crazy. So you got to be kidding me. This this just endangered, you know, not just the. Mm -hmm. Uh, themselves and everybody, uh, the motoring public and potentially the, the police officer involved, but uh, these crazy episodes and I don't know, I'll take it. Well, now it's, you know, a number of years ago, it's now an arrestable offense, but the, the ultimate penalty mm. for that arrestable offense is $100. Still fine. very, I mean, $100 fine, exactly. And it, you're right, I, uh, back when I was a sergeant in, in uh, Mashpee many, many years back, um, I drafted a bill and uh, Tom Cahir filed it. Uh, I think I might have copied you. Very, <laughs> some similarities. But mine was a, 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 probably a, a, little, a little flattery. more drastic uh, in its, its, its approach. I uh, made it, uh, uh, it uh, but it, it, it made its way to a hearing, and, uh, but uh, didn't move forward. We're very excited about moving this bill along. Mm. That just sounds like, I mean, there's so many things that are more complicated and difficult to, to solve. This seems like a no-brainer. Oh, exactly. You know? Exactly. We should build. Let's move on to the, 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 oh. the, the more, the, the tougher stuff. Um, so that brings up, you know, we're talking about the whole sort of legislation and what's, you know, on the horizon, both locally and, and, and nationally. And one of the issues that came up um, at that meeting, but it's kind of entered the national uh, conversation, is uh, cameras on mm -hmm. police officers, you know, with what happened in Ferguson and New York. There's been a, a push in some areas and a push back in some areas. And I'm curious what you think about uh, whether cameras are a good idea, whether we could spend those resources better elsewhere. Uh, what's, what's your view? Well, you know, I, uh, my perspective on this comes from the environment that I'm in. Not, you know, I, I'm not considering the environment in Missouri sure. or, or, or any right. of these, these other states. And, um, you know, cameras are a, 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 a useful tool, but, um, at the stage of the game right now, I think that um, that's a piece. That's a piece of equipment that we have. We have some other more pressing needs that I think we should be addressing. If there's if there's funding, uh, uh, substantial funding, that's going to be made available for to issue these uh, purchase and issue these these body cameras. Uh, I, you know, we have some. Um, I'd like to see a far more emphasis on funding for police training, which is, as, as you're well aware, uh, through the Mass Police Chiefs here in Massachusetts, we have been uh, fighting this cause for a couple of decades and um, with some limited success, but, you know, it's very recently, the uh, last year, uh, the good folks at the legislature, uh, we made a, you know, we made a, a nice positive step in the first one in a long time. I'd like to see, you know, investment, if there's, if there is capital for cameras, I would rather see that be invested in taking the next step with the training, mm -hmm. um, Paul, you know, with standards development. Um, some of the other things that I think are right now are, are more critical um, than body cameras is to ensure that each police officer on the street has immediate access to the, you know, the latest technology, non-lethal technology. Um, Taser is a, you know, a very, everyone knows the name. It's you know it's just a, another a, a, a means to stop someone, and it's not a application of a lethal force. Um, you know I look at uh, some of the events nationally, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see in some cases a case could be made that if those officers had this type of equipment, uh, there might have been a completely different result. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I frankly I don't think you can deny that. Um, so. When I hear let's you know gra let's grab body cameras, you know great that, that three or four years from now once we have I think once we have uh, have a very robust training and mandated training uh, that's not a unfunded mandate to the local communities on use of force, making sure that we're prov we're providing every opportunity for these communities to be able to equip their officers with the latest and greatest and, and most effective less lethal <coughs> non lethal equipment. Then the next step we can take a look at would be uh, body cameras.
But I think we've got some work to do yeah. before we spend any money elsewhere. Now, uh, two questions came up. One is, um, is it uh, do in, in Duxbury, do, do all the officers have the tasers or, or less than lethal types of? Uh we have that equipment. We have, um, uh, we have the patrol officers uh, carry tasers. Okay. Um, and we do have uh, other less lethal uh, devices, uh, beanbag round. Uh, yep. I think you s there was a, an event just the other day in Wilmington and um, where they use both types of less lethal, non-lethal force options uh, for an individual, armed individual with a knife uh, that assaulted some folks and was uh, mm -hmm. challenging the, the police officers. And that was, I look at it from outside looking in, not, not knowing the intimate details, but just hearing the, what I'm seeing being reported, that's a perfect example of how that incident was handled as opposed to what some of these other uh, incidents that we've seen nationally that have gotten all this, this coverage, mm -hmm. um, and where those officers didn't have, immediately have those types of tools at their disposal. Well, we're actually almost out of time, believe it or not. I, we could probably have a whole discussion about <laughs> just this particular issue. But before we go, I wanted to just give an opportunity for you to uh, let folks out back home know, you know how to get a hold of the department. I know you're on Twitter now, what the Twitter handle is, and any mm -hmm. other information like that that might be helpful for, for viewers. Yeah, we, we try to, um, uh, we're tr it's, it's new to us. Uh, our, our kids are teaching us how to use all this social media. Yeah. But uh, we are on Twitter now. Uh, that's been a very successful tool. Uh, we, we put out um, little snippets of nice little things going on, but the real reason that, w that we're there, it allows us to do those immediate notifications if we're closing a road, if we have an, a, mm -hmm. an event. It's, it, it just supplements the uh, sort of the reverse 911. Uh, and we have the, the website that we're, uh, we're continuing to work on, Dutchbury, it's, it's DutchburyPolice.org. www.DutchburyPolice.org. Um, it's a uh, email links to everybody in, in the department. You have a question, comment, concern, where they fire away, and Great. Um, yeah. So we're uh, we're we're bringing ourselves into the 90s with our technology. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Exactly, but uh, no, we well, really encourage uh, folks to. It's a great feedback source uh, for all of us. So we really encourage folks to take a look at that stuff and don't hesitate to reach out great. using those. Well, I want to thank you, Chief uh, Chief Matt Clancy, Duxbury. Uh, police Chief for being my guest this month. I'm Josh Cutler and you're watching another edition of Cutler Corner. Thanks for tuning in.